please stay tuned as we complete this message taught in Omaha, Nebraska on the importance of being yourself. Some of you tonight just need to give yourself a big hug and you need to say, this is it, I'm drawing the line in the sand. I am what I am. This is what it is and I'm going to like it and see what I can do with it in Jesus' name. Some people do things real fast and they learn real fast and others, you know, it takes them a lot longer. But boy, when they get it, they've got it. Some people are more given to details and others don't see the details at all. You know, I'm always thinking and meditating and preaching in my head and, and we'll be driving down the road and Dave will say, oh, you know, look at, I don't know, whatever, you know, a cat in a tree or whatever. And, you know, I'm like... He always laughs because he's like, we're, we're a mile past it and I'm finally, it's sinking in and I'm going. <laughs> we'll go to a restaurant, he'll say, oh yeah, don't you remember eating here? We ate here and I ate this and you ate that and this is who we went with and I'm like, I don't remember that at all. We don't all have to be alike and I spent so many years of my life persecuting myself miserable because I was trying to be like everybody else because I didn't like who I was. How many of you suffer with this too? Man, I tried to be like Dave. He's so calm and level and nothing bothers him. Dave has one answer to everything, cast your care. And here's his other favorite line, we'll see. <laughs> Cast your care. And I'm like hanging from the chandelier somewhere going, ah! He says, God will take care of it. When will God take care of it? How will God take care of it? I want to sit around and philosophize and try to figure it out and reason it out. And of course, you know, God's delivered me from a lot of that stuff. But, I mean, I actually got mad at him because he was peaceful. <laughs> I tried to be like my pastor's wife. She was sweet and little and petite and had a gift of mercy. <laughs> She'd counsel people and say, oh. 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 Tell me more. Let's talk about it some more. Oh. oh. When people would come to me, I'd take a look at them. They'd talk about two minutes, and I'd have that all figured out and know exactly what their problem was. And I'd say, This is what you need to do. Go home and do it. Praise the Lord. Because I'm one of these people, I mean, I'm not mean, but I just cut right to the... <sighs> That's why I preach the way I do. I don't dance around it and play games with it. I've got a certain amount of time to get some truth through to you, and I don't have time to dress it up. Hallelujah. It is what it is. You can't make truth anything other than what it is. You know, but then I thought, well, I'm mean, and I'm rude, and I'm crude. But you know what I finally found out? This is the way God made me. Now, that doesn't mean I can't improve. That doesn't mean that we don't need to develop the fruit of the Spirit. You know, God puts people around us as examples. I kind of chuckle sometimes because it seems like all the years I've been in ministry, I've always had somebody in my life that I was close to that was really nice. And when one nice person goes and does something else no longer in my life, God sends another really nice, sweet person. I have a new girl traveling with me now, somebody I've known for 20 years, and she's not here this weekend, but she is so nice. Now, see, there would have been a time when I would have felt condemned by her niceness, and I would have went around trying to sound nice. 
And then people would have been saying to me, what is wrong with you? <laughs> but what does happen is having those people around me, they don't condemn me anymore, but they remind me to be a little softer and a little sweeter. And you know what? A lot of the people that God has put in your life, He hasn't put them there for you to compare yourself with them. They have things that you could benefit from. You may never be quite as good at it as they are, but it will remind you to just stay balanced. Dave is great at casting his care, and he doesn't worry about things. And it reminds me, stay peaceful. Just stay peaceful. You need to stop being mad at all the people that are in your life that aren't like you. And one of the reasons why we get mad at the people in our life that are not like us and why we try to change them and make them be like us is because we don't want them convicting us. Amen? Amen? need to be who you are. Well, I tried to be like my pastor's wife, and I tried to be like my next-door neighbor. She was Miss Arts and Crafts. and I mean, she mowed the lawn. I couldn't even start the stupid lawnmower. She had a garden. She grew tomatoes. She canned tomatoes. She sewed all of her family's clothes. She macrameed her own plant hangers. She wallpapered. She painted. And I just wanted to cast out a devil. You know, it's just hallelujah. But you know what? Until you know that you can't be like somebody else, you will never be king. David could have never been king had he not known that he could not be somebody else. If he would have went out there and tried to fight Goliath with Saul's armor on, he would have got his pants beat off. And he would have never been king. And you know what? I think a lot of you and a lot of people watching by TV, you may be missing your destiny because you're so busy trying to be something other than what you are. You feel like you're not acceptable because you look around at other people or people have said things to you that have hurt you and you believe what they say. You need to believe what God says about you, not what people say about you. And I will show you what God says about you. Go to Psalm 139. Now you understand this doesn't mean that we don't need to change. I'm not talking about needing to change. We all need to change. We all need to receive correction. And we all need to keep growing. And, and from glory to glory to glory, God changes us. We can work with God and see some of our behavior change. But the basic person that God has created us to be, that is what we are. And we're going to have to learn how to be the best we can be. Psalm 139 is so good. How many of you want to know what's under here? Well, I might tell you in a minute. <laughs> Psalm 139, verse 1. Oh, Lord, you have searched me thoroughly and have known me. Oh, wow. Now, you know, when God says he knows you, that's not like your next door neighbor saying, I know you. God knows you. I said, God knows you. You know my down-sitting and my uprising. You understand my thoughts before I ever think them. You sift and search out my path and my lying down, and you are acquainted with all of my ways. Like I always say, God knows what you're going to do. Before you ever do it, you're no surprise to God. You know, God didn't call me into ministry and then three days later turn to Jesus and the Holy Ghost and say, oh man, <laughs> did we ever make a mistake? <laughs> and that's why we act sometimes, you know, like God gets up and goes, oh man. God knew every mistake you were ever going to make before he ever called you into a relationship with himself. You're the one that has a problem with it. There's no pit so deep that his arm is so short he can't reach down in there and get you out. The blood of Jesus covers everything or it covers nothing. Amen? Hallelujah. 
There's not a word in my mouth still unuttered, but behold, Lord, you know it all together. God already knows everything you're going to say, everything you're going to do, every decision you're going to make. Verse 13. For you did form my inward parts. You did knit me together in my mother's womb. I will confess and praise you for you are fearful and wonderful and for the awful wonder of my birth. Now watch this. I never noticed this till about three months ago. And then this is what he says. Wonderful are your works. He was talking about himself. God, what you've made here is wonderful. This is not an accident. You did this on purpose. You put together my personality. You placed a call on my life. You have a destiny for me. You gave me my fingerprints. You gave me my DNA. You gave me the color of my eyes. You gave me the sound of my voice. You gave me curly hair or straight hair. You gave me blonde hair or black hair or brown hair or red hair. You, God, did with your own hand on purpose knit me together in my mother's womb. Wonderful are your works. I love that. How can we talk about... David made mistakes, and yet here he is saying, you put me together, God. Wonderful are your works. I wonder how many of us would ever have the boldness and the courage and the faith to talk like David talked. You have to stop being against yourself. We need you fully confident, full of the Holy Ghost, ready to step out of the boat, understanding the devil's under your feet, and that no devil in hell and no man on earth can keep you from God's will for your life if you keep your eyes on God. We get too wrought up about people and what they think and what they don't think and what they say and what they don't say and how they look at us and don't look at us. If you're going to let what people think rule you, you will never be king in your realm. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret and intricately and curiously wrought as if embroidered with various colors in the depths of the earth, a region of darkness and mystery. Your eyes saw my unformed substance, and in your book all the days of my life were written before ever they took shape, when as yet there was none of them. How precious and weighty are your thoughts toward me. Now, he talks about how God did form us in our mother's womb. And we have an inner self and we have an outer self. Now, by the time we come into a relationship with God, most of us are pretty messed up. There's a few who get an opportunity or make the decision to accept Christ at an early age before they mess themselves up too bad. But most of us try it on our own for a long, long time before we finally surrender and give up and let God be God. When we're born again, we don't look different. We don't even always act different right away. When you're born again, Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, comes to live in you. Well, because he's holy, he cannot reside anywhere that is unholy. So therefore, he must do a thorough, complete cleanup in your inner man in order to live there. That's why when he appeared to Moses at the burning bush, he told Moses, take the shoes from off thy feet, for the ground on which you stand is holy ground. Why did Moses have to take his shoes off? Because nothing of earth, nothing earthly, nothing fleshly, nothing man-made could mix with the holiness of God. So whether you understand it or not, whether it makes any sense or not, you are holy 
if you're born again. You may not behave holy all the time, but God says you're holy. You may not act right all the time, but he says you've been made right. We may not always walk in the fruit of the Spirit, but Galatians 5 says if the Spirit is in us, then the fruit of the Spirit is in us. I have love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, meekness, gentleness, humility, and self-control. Every good thing that you will ever need to be the person God wants you to be is in you right now as a born-again believer in the form of a seed. What we do is we pay too much attention to the outer man and what other people do is they pay too much attention to the outer man and what we need to do is we need to really understand what's in us and what we're capable of if we'll keep our eyes on God and little by little from glory to glory the Holy Spirit who is sent into our life has a job to do. He is the agent of sanctification. And what sanctification means is that the Holy Spirit takes the wonderful work that's been done in us. Wonderful are your works, O oh Lord. There's a wonderful thing that's been done in me. I was created perfect. The devil came and messed me up. You shed your blood. You redeemed me and bought me back. You cleaned me up inside. You came to live in me. Now inwardly, I'm in the same condition that Adam was in the garden. All I've got to do is work with the Holy Spirit to get it into my mind, into my emotions, into my will, and out through my body so the world can see outwardly what you've done inwardly. And it's a process and it's a journey. Now, why do people judge and criticize us? Because that's what they see. Sure isn't anything I'd want there. That's a pretty ugly thing, isn't it? Yuck. I actually brought that here from my home. I keep that in my home. I decorate one part of my home with this. And I do it on purpose because it preaches a message to me every time I look at it. You see, when I used to look in the mirror, I saw this. When I said God had called me to preach and that I was going to travel all over the world and help people, people laughed at me because they saw this. But you know what? There's something else here. Come on now. Come on now. This is what God created. This is what the devil did. But you know what? All of this can eventually be chipped away, and this is what can be showing. We've just got to get what's in us worked to the outside of us. Now listen. I've always wondered about these things. They're called geodes. And I'm just like, God, <laughs> why in the world did you hide something that magnificent in that? Why is gold buried in hills and mountains? Why are diamonds buried in mountains? Why do you have to dig for the stuff? Why isn't it just laying around everywhere so we can just go get it? You know, there's something about God. He hides the good stuff. And you got to be willing to dig and dig and dig and dig and go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Even oil, you got to drill for oil. You got to drill for water. I want to know why aren't all those things just laying around and convenient to get? The next time somebody judges you, you say, you don't have one idea what's going on inside me. You don't have any idea about my heart. How dare we judge people when we don't know their heart? I believe that we do need to, to judge sin, and I believe things need to be done right in the church. You know, Paul corrected the church because they were letting all kinds of stupid stuff go on, and they weren't dealing with it. But there's a difference in judging 
and bringing restoration and being judgmental. Amen? And I'll tell you what, we have to get to the point like Paul did where he said, you know what, frankly, I don't care what you think of me. I don't even sit in judgment on myself. God is my judge. And there's another place where Paul said, from now on, let no man trouble me because I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. You've got to get over being overwrought about what you're not and what people think and what you can't do, and what gifts you don't have, and all you need to do is let the Holy Ghost work with you, and you need to dig in the Word, and you need to dig, and you need to dig in prayer, and you need to dig some more in the Word, and you need to dig some more in prayer, and then pretty soon there's going to start to be a turning in your life, and a turning, 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 and a turning. You know, I really want to encourage you to stop comparing yourself with other people and just make the decision that you are going to be the precious individual you that God has created you to be. You know, for some of you watching the program today, that would be a real step of faith because you have spent most of your life comparing yourself with other people, trying to be something that you're never going to be. You know why? God is not going to help you be somebody else. He likes you just the way He has created you. And obviously, we all need changes in our life. We all need to improve. But you know what? You can enjoy yourself where you're at on the way to where you're going. I want to offer today my new book, The Confident Woman. And boy, am I excited about this book. I mean, I think this is going to help millions of women worldwide to be the woman that God has intended them to be. I believe it's going to help you step out boldly, overcome fears in your life, and just really be the best you that you can be. Get this information down. Make sure you get your copy today, and then stay with me because I want to share something with you at the end of the program. What is a confident woman? I think a confident woman would be sure of herself and what she wants in life. Somebody who's self-assured. I think a confident woman is one who has a direction in her life. Does it feel like your confidence is only skin deep? Do you long for true confidence but don't know if you're taking the right steps to get there? Make your move now with Joyce Meyer's number one New York Times best-selling book, The Confident Woman. Get The Confident Woman now with a gift of $25 or more. And as a bonus, you'll receive Joyce's teaching, Be Yourself. Call 1-800-727-9673 or log on to JoyceMeyer.org today. Hi, it's Martin Smith here from Delirious, and we're here with these absolutely beautiful children, and uh, we're giving them food today. It's been an amazing privilege to be here with Joyce Meyer Ministries. You know, look around, you see what's happening, amazing stuff. You too can partner. I mean, if you're out there and you're watching and, and you've got $10, $15, send it in because every little thing helps. If you want to make a difference, call the number that's coming up on the screen. You can visit the website also. It's joycemeyer.org and you can find out how to help. This, this is amazing what's happening here and as Delirious have been able to partner, it's been fantastic. Cheers. With your missions donation today of $25 or more, we'll send you this hardcover devotional, New Day, New You, and the Delirious CD, Mission Bell, just to say thanks. With a gift of $100 or more, you'll receive the CD and the leather cover version of the devotional. And with your donation of $1,000 or more, we'll send you this entire Bible Discovery Library, a set of resources like Joyce uses in her own Bible study, designed to enhance your study of God's Word. Of course, these gifts are small tokens of thanks for the real gift of love you'll be sharing with people whose names you'll probably never know, but whose souls will be eternally grateful. Call us right now. Make a very special gift specifically for World Missions. Toll free 1-800-727-9673. That's 1-800-727-9673. Or visit us online at JoyceMeyer.org. 
Christmas is just around the corner, and there's no better gift for the people you love than a gift that encourages, uplifts, and challenges them to be all they can be in Christ. So, here's a few suggestions from right here at Joyce Meyer Ministries. Our two New York Times bestsellers, Look Great, Feel Great, will inspire a healthier lifestyle both physically and emotionally. And The Confident Woman encourages women of all ages to rise to greatness in every area of their life. Check out the Everyday Life Bible. It's the very first study Bible developed from the Amplified Version, and it's filled with day-to-day relevance inspired by Joyce's past experiences. It'll help you see how the Bible still relates to your life today. Joyce's all-time bestseller, The Battlefield of the Mind. It's still touching lives, and now there's the complete Battlefield of the Mind package with something for everyone you love. Of course, we also offer daily encouragement through our collection of coffee mugs, tote bags, and uplifting worship music. Don't procrastinate. You can take a chunk out of your Christmas shopping list today. Visit us online at JoyceMeyer.org or call right now toll-free 1-800-727-9673. Next time on Enjoying Everyday Life, when she discovered she was unable to have children, Claudine's lifelong confidence was shaken. I wouldn't look at myself anymore. I was that disgusted with who I was. I didn't even know who I was anymore because who I was wasn't the person that I had planned it to be. So pretty much I stayed in the house for those three months. How to live well in the midst of adversity, tomorrow on Enjoying Everyday Life.